Sometimes you just get it wrong. Take this casting for example. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done any metal casting and you'd think it'd be like riding a bike, but for me, it wasn't. Some time ago, I designed this Spartan inspired ring. It was always my intention to design a matching pendant, but I never quite got around to it. So I used ZBrush to do this, but there's plenty of other CAD programs out there, including free stuff like Blender. I was quite pleased with the overall design, and so I decided to add a custom bale. One of the questions I often get asked is if you can print your own sprues rather than use wax. And the answer is yes, you can. And here I've done exactly that. I've even included the bale. The trick when designing these is to keep in mind how the metal will flow. And just as importantly, how the print will orientate on the plate. I opted to use the Elegoo Mars 4 Ultra, which is an excellent choice for jewellery printing. I typically use Soriatek Cast Resin, but as my bottle was empty, I turned to Bluecast X1. I had absolutely no idea what settings to use, but I was delighted to discover Bluecast's new website. Now this is a great example of how it should be done. Not only is there some useful information about the Bluecast resin, there's also a section on casting tips. And it's a pity I didn't spend more time reading this. Anyway, what I really love about this website is the download section. Select the resin that you're using, then head over to the Cheetubox profile page. Here you can actually download the config file settings for most printers including the Mars 4 Ultra, which I was using. Okay, this will only work for Cheetah Box, and you might use another slicer, but this isn't really much of an inconvenience. I added my printing support using Lychee, which is my preferred slicer. I then exported this as an STL file, and opened it in a free version of Cheetah Box. With the config file imported, the settings were ready to use, and I'll be 100% honest, I've made no effort to verify them. I decided to trust that Bluecast have got it right, or it would be as near as really matters. I could have copied the settings over to Lychee, but I was happy enough to let Cheetah Box do the actual slicing. Like most resins, Bluecast likes to be warm, and the Mars 4 Ultra doesn't have a heater, so it's worth investing in a heater and or enclosure, which is something I covered in a recent video. Well, thanks to the provided settings, it's printed. There are a few very easy stages involved in preparing X1, and I've covered these in a separate video. The warm Bluecast has done an amazing job with a Mars 4 Ultra. This is an incredible print produced at 0.03 layer height. There's no flaws that I can see and there's no voxel lines either. Things up until this point had gone great. Now came the downward spiral. You'll notice that not all of the sprues are fully formed and that's not the fault of the resin or the printer. It's obviously my fault on how I supported it. The remedy is simple enough, I just needed to thicken these areas using sprue wax. I did manage that, but I also managed to break the hoop at the same time, which I had to glue back on with wax, and in doing that, I dropped a big blob of wax all over the logo. All in all, a bit of a mess. I wish the mixing stage had been as easy as it looks here, but actually that went wrong too. Firstly, my scales were set on ounces rather than grams, which would have been fine if I was measuring in ounces, 
But of course, I wasn't. Luckily, I spotted this issue, but it is an important point. Get your measurements right. It is critical. Next was a rookie mistake. I poured the water into the powder. Never do this. The powder should be poured into the water. Doing it the other way around can lead to a lumpy mix. You might think that the burnout process went correctly at least, but no. It's a good practice to place the flask in the oven button side down, especially when there's wax involved. Later, during the cooling cycle, the flask gets rotated 180 degrees. Unfortunately, when I came to do this, I noticed that it was already button side up. Now, this might not be all that critical, but it's a good practice for a reason, and I got it wrong. Here you can see me faffing about with the hot flask, which is getting cooler by the second, something I really didn't want. I just couldn't get the vacuum gauge to rise. I thought maybe the gasket was leaking, so I tried pressing down firmly. I even flipped the gasket over. It was then that I noticed that I hadn't actually turned the vacuum machine on. Yep, I really was that stupid. So I had a broken print covered in wax, lumpy plaster, and a flask that hadn't been rotated properly that was cooling far too much. It was no real surprise that the casting came out less than ideal. Okay, it's supposed to be a battered shield, so it certainly fits the theme. But I couldn't live with it, not like this, so I needed to do it again. You know what? That's still not perfect. Can you see the problems at the top? If you look at the back, I designed this sprue poorly. It's never a good idea to go from thick to thin on a sprue, something I forgot about when I designed it. Some believe it can generate too much pressure during metal flow and cause the plaster to be damaged during the pour. In truth, I probably didn't need this sprue at all, but I could have also got away with a uniform, thin sprue instead. I opted to have a go at cleaning things up before deciding whether to cast again. Well, that hasn't turned out too bad. I think the beauty of this design is that you can get away with a bad casting and most folks won't notice. If you want to have a go at casting this yourself, you can buy this design cheaply on Etsy or Colts 3D. And the proceeds help support my channel, so thanks to those that do. The bale came out quite pitted and on something so small, I didn't really fancy trying to clean it up. So that's something we'll have to look at on another occasion. Next time, however, I'm hoping to do something very new for me. I'm hoping to have a go at gold plating this helmet. So do look out for that one. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my mistakes and misfortunes, and I hope that you maybe learned something along the way. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.